Today we're looking at which HVLP sprayer you should choose for your shop. Now realize these are all turbine based systems, so this isn't the type of spray gun that you would hook to an air compressor. Instead, this is the style that you use with a dedicated turbine unit. Now we're going to look at gravity feed guns, bottom feed guns with pressure assist, and even a side mounted gun with unique features. Stick around. So we'll look at the M model first and we'll start with the more traditional bottom feed gun. This kind of looks like the old fashioned siphon gun that just really relied on a siphon effect from the air pressure. And these are a more advanced gun. They are bottom feed, but they also use a pressure assist. And so you're much less likely to lose suction and you can just keep spraying without interruption. There's also a nice conversion kit available, and this is perfect for someone that already has an M model gun in the bottom feed version and wants to add the ability to use it as a gravity feed gun. The M model guns usually come packaged with a two stage turbine unit like the Hobby Pro 2 or the Semi Pro 2, but it also makes a really good backup gun for any system. Now for some of the basic adjustments on the M model, you've got a fan control knob on the back of the gun, Fluid control knob is in the very typical position on the back of the gun. A lot of these Fuji guns have this blue plastic handle and they advertise it as a stay cool handle. But to me, the main benefits are that it's ergonomic, it's very comfortable and easy to grip, but it's also chemical resistant. So if you're working with a lacquer or a polyurethane, you can wipe that off with a solvent and not worry about damaging the handle. The bottom feed version has a 1000 cc fluid cup, easily releases, the mechanism is just the same with your T-series guns if you're familiar with those. Just rotate it into position and gently lock the lever. There's a filter screen on the pickup tube so you want to have a few of those extra on hand and make sure that it gets cleaned when you put your gun away for the night. These are pressure assisted guns as well. And so there's a pressure tube with check valve that comes down from the body of the gun to constantly maintain adequate pressure in the fluid cup. All of the Fuji guns we're looking at today are compatible with their quick release air hoses. Just retract the collar and slide the hose in place. From there, you can use the inline air valve to adjust the air output to the gun. Whatever model HVLP sprayer you settle on, make sure it's one that has a good selection of air cap sets. The M model comes standard with a 1.3 millimeter set. What I like to do is go out and buy an additional air cap set in the 1.0 millimeter size. This is the one I prefer for spraying clear finishes like lacquer. When you're changing out the air cap sets on any of these guns, it's important to remove the fluid knob and spring, pull the trigger back to release the needle, and do all of that before you disassemble the front of the gun. Then you can loosen that collar and remove the air cap. And the collar is actually separate from the air cap on this. So if you get a new air cap set, you'll replace this part, but you'll be able to reuse the collar. And then you can remove the fluid nozzle with the included wrench. and pop out the air diffuser. When you're putting the air diffuser back in the M model gun, just make sure that the white seal is facing outwards. That's what will make a good contact with the nozzle as you reinstall it. And likewise, when you're putting the gun back together, make sure to fully assemble the front of the gun before you reinsert the needle. And we do things in that order just to prevent any damage or bending of the tip of the needle and a drop of Spray gun lubrication is a good idea as you reinsert that needle. If you're new to spraying and you're looking for ballpark settings on the M style gun, just set your fan pattern somewhere in the middle of the range. And then on the fluid adjustment nut, have a couple of threads showing behind the gun there. That's a great place to start and you can dial things in from there. 
If you feel like your M-style gun is just blasting on way too much fluid and you can't decrease it enough with the fluid knob, that's where I would recommend switching out the factory 1.3 millimeter air cap with a smaller 1.0 millimeter cap set. Next we'll look at the gravity feed version of the M model gun and it's actually the same gun body whether you're looking at the gravity feed version or the bottom feed version. The difference of course is the cup and it has this U-shaped tube that allows you to connect a gravity feed style cup even though the fluid coupler is on the bottom of the gun. With this setup you have a 400cc aluminum cup and that tube that drops down to the fluid coupler. Controls and everything else on the gun body are exactly the same whether you're talking about the gravity feed version or the bottom feed version of the M model. Now on the gravity feed cup this top assembly rotates so you can quickly turn it to get any of the slack out of your way. Another nice feature is this quick release. You simply retract the red collar and you can pull out the pressure tube. That depressurizes the system so you can open up your lid and clean out the gun and it goes back in place just as easily. Let's take a look at the GXPC model and some of the unique features on that spray gun. It's got a side-mounted fluid cup, which gives it some particular advantages, especially when it comes to profile. This gives it a nice low profile so you can spray inside cabinets or other confined areas. It's also got a swivel and set feature where you loosen a thumb screw and that lets you position the cup at just about any angle. Once you have the angle desired, go ahead and retighten the thumb screw. And that just gives you extra flexibility in terms of the angle that you spray at. Probably the best feature of this gun though is the flip up kickstand. You can flip it out of the way when it's not in use, but a lot of the times I'll just keep it down and look at that. A gravity feed spray gun that stands on its own. How great is that? Fan control knob is on the side of the GXPC. That's pretty convenient there. Let's take it apart and get a look at the internals. This is one of the easiest guns to clean. Squeeze the trigger back a bit and you'll be able to remove that needle. Now these needle and nozzle sets are unique to the guns they go with. So the GXPC has its own set of air caps and they're not interchangeable with the M model or the T series. Remove the nozzle, and that's about all there is to disassembling the GXPC. It's really easy to clean just because there's so few parts. There may be some confusion on the naming of the air cap sets for the GXPC gun. The 3H is simply a 1.0 millimeter set. The 4H is a 1.4 millimeter set. Whatever size you choose, make sure to also use the fluid nozzle and needle that's included with the set. You can get just about any GXPC air cap set you might need from 0.7 all the way up to 2.2 millimeter. The GXPC spray gun sometimes comes packaged with a Minimite 3 turbine unit, but it makes a great add-on to any existing system. I just can't get over how handy that is to have a gravity feed gun that'll stand on its own. It's a brilliant idea. An accessory that's available for the GXPC is a side-mounted 600cc nylon cup. That might be a great choice if you already have the GXPC model and you're looking to add a little more fluid capacity for those larger jobs. The nylon cup kit comes with a right angle adapter to make it side mounted. And the pros and cons of this, you probably lose a little bit of the compact nature because the cup obviously is taller, but also because of this fitting adds a little bit of height. The other negative I think is you lose the quick release feature on the pressure tube. So that's a great feature on the original setup, the 400cc metal cup for the GXPC. So you'll lose that if you go to the nylon cup, it becomes a more traditional press-on fitting. The T-Series have got to be the Cadillac of HVLP guns. They really have all the features that set them apart for pro users or just people that like to spray more frequently. Whether you choose the larger capacity of the bottom feed gun 
or the ergonomics of the gravity feed gun, it can be a great choice if you want that finely atomized finish with minimal overspray. So just a quick look at the T-Series guns side by side. Of course the T-70 with a 1000cc aluminum cup on the bottom, or the T-75G with a 600cc nylon cup up top. So if you followed along with our earlier discussion on the M model guns, things should be looking very familiar at this point. You've got that metal cup on the bottom, easily latches. Everything is pressure assisted, just like so many of the Fuji guns. So we have the pressure tube with check valve. Now here on the T-Series guns, the fan control knob has been moved to the side. You still have that classic position of the fluid knob at the rear of the gun. There's actually a lot of engineering that's gone into the T-Series guns. Everything about the shape and design of the body of these guns is to optimize spray performance with minimal overspray. Beyond that, with the T-Series guns, you get stainless steel passages and springs, something that's important if you do a lot of water-based coatings. Now, unlike the M model, which uses the same gun body for both cup styles, the T-Series is different. If you want the bottom feed gun, get the T-70. If you want the gravity feed, it's the T-75G. There's a few more parts and pieces to keep track of with these T-Series guns, but don't let that dissuade you. If you want to learn more about the internals of these guns, check out my two minute, two ounce gun cleaning video. Likewise, the T-Series has a range of air cap sets available for just about anything you might want to spray. The T-Series spray guns are most often packaged with a three stage or higher turbine unit. So with all that in mind, which are my favorite guns? I think personal preference factors into this quite a bit, but the one I reach for more than any other is the T75G. I've always been a fan of the gravity feed style guns, and I think a lot of that is due to ergonomics. When the cup is full, the weight is right where I want it. It's very ergonomic and it's easy on the wrist. Remember, if you were to use a side mounted cup all day, it tends to put the weight to the side and that's something your wrist has to adjust to might become a factor for large jobs or if you have a particularly long day of spraying. But another gun I might reach for, and this is in a case where I have a small job or I want a gun that's really easy to clean out, or maybe I'm just working in a confined space like a cabinet, in those cases I might reach for a GXPC. The large fluid cups on these bottom feed models, whether that's the M model or the T-Series, can't be discounted. And if you choose this style of gun, it's probably because you're doing a large project and you really value that extra volume. All right, guys, there we go. A nice look at the HBLP spray guns that are on the market today. Hopefully some of the info here has helped you narrow the pack a little bit and figuring out which might be your next spray gun. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.